Hi, Rich Spisano here from Digitally Fearless. Um, a week ago or more, I saw a video by Carl Surrey, and he was using Veronoid in a very unique way, and I liked his technique, so I thought I'd try it to create something unique. If you want to see Carl's original tutorial, the link is in the description below. Before we get started, please click that like and subscribe button. These tutorials are free and your clicking those like and subscribe buttons really helps my channel out and helps others to find my videos. So thanks so much and let's get started. So Carl showed this technique where he took a box like that and he made sure the color was white. And it's important that it's white, and I'll show you why in a minute, and he'll show you why if you follow the link below. And what he did was he went to Filter, Color, Veronoi, and this is what we got. Now you can change the size of these boxes any way you want, and you can change the width any way you want. So I'm trying to give it maybe like that and maybe I'm thinking around that there should be good and I'll show you why I'm making these. I'm really looking only at the bottom section for the size because the bottom section what I'm going to create is flagstones but the perspective is going to make the back section smaller and I don't want to stretch the, this section too large. So I want it to look in proportion. So I will leave it maybe there, and I'll hit apply. Now, here's the interesting part, and this is the part that caught my eye what Carl did. And this is also the reason he asked us to start with white. He went to filters, color, and erase white paper. If we would have started with another color, it wouldn't have worked as well. You could erase by color and selection, but it's not as clean. But erase white paper is very clean. So what you're doing now is this is now a pixel layer it's see-through. It's all you're seeing all these lines and these are not strokes any longer. This is just a solid pixel layer with holes in it. And that's the best part of this technique. So now we can go to effects on that layer and do a color overlay if we'd like. And I'm going to choose a sort of a grayish. And I'm going to try and get a close-up. And again, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm going to add noise. I don't know if YouTube will show the noise as well. I'm adding a lot of noise to this. So maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to leave it at that. But there really is, there we go. If we go really close, you'll see that there is noise right there. Now let's go back to the photo. Now the next thing I'd like to try I'm going to add a pixel layer. So it's a plain pixel layer, but now I am going to select this layer that I just created that looks like Veronoi. And what I want to try and do is I want to use the flood selection tool and I need to have contiguous on and I'm going to keep, and I need to have it set to add. So every time I click it, it's another selection. So let me get close to show you what I'm talking about. I'm clicking in the middle and you'll see that, and I click somewhere else, you see that. Now I'm not going to be very careful with this because I, want to, I don't want this tutorial to go on so long, so I'm just randomly going to click here and there, but you should definitely pick and choose where you want to click, and when you decide, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute, but pick and choose where you want the colors to be and let's try here, here, I'll go some further down here. I'm just clicking randomly right now, but you shouldn't click randomly, you should really think it out. But I'm going to leave it at that for now. And now I have to go back up to the pixel layer, and I want to pick a color like a terracotta. So let's try maybe something in this coloration. And now I want to use my flood fill tool, not have contiguous on, and make sure I'm on that top pixel layer. So it'll, it'll try to flood fill the whole color on that whole layer, but it can only fill where I had all the selections. And then I could deselect Control or Command D. So now we got the basis for everything. 
If you, if you think you want to change this at any point, then group it and then duplicate it. Control or Command J. Control or Command G to group it. Control or Command J to duplicate it. And I'm going to hide the one below. The reason I need you to duplicate it is I want to rasterize it because it's easier on the processor because now we're going to do a perspective and that's tough on the processor with the Veronoi and all this other stuff. So it's, it's much easier to work with rasterize with perspective. So now I'm going to turn on this photo which I got at Unsplash. And the reason I made the canvas so large is I have to be sure that these flagstones in the beginning are a proper size for the photo. If I would have made the Veronoi this small and then I had a stretch because I need to follow this one point perspective line. And if I did that, I'd be stretching that Veronoid out so bad it would look horrible. I'm going to be uh, doing a perspective on this, but before I do that, I pulled in one other thing from uh, Unsplash. And I pulled in this photo. And all it is is a photo of concrete. And I'm going to bring that concrete up to the size also. Let's see if we can get this to fit. And all it is, I'm using it as a texture. And maybe set the um, layer to different modes. I'm not sure which I'm going to do, top or bottom. Or I could put it on below it and set this to a different mode. Like, so I can show the texture right through there. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So now if you get a close up here, you can see and I'll do different ones. I'll go down the line. Maybe um, multiply is even better. I'm seeing the texture of the concrete on multiply plus the texture on these flagstones. So that's kind of work, what I'm looking for. And once again, I'll take these two, select the two with the shift, group, and then rasterize. So now if I lower the opacity, I can see the street. And the, now remember, one, there's a one-point perspective on the street. Your point starts here, and it follows this line to somewhere out here. So what I need to do now is to go to Live Perspective and try and judge where that line, how far that line is going to go. And I'm guessing like right around there. So I'm going to just pull this out to approximately where I think that line's going to go. And the same here. It goes this way and probably to there. I'd say something like that. And then I'm going to pull this down. And remember, it's see-through right now. It's a little transparency, so just so we can see what we're working with. And I'm just trying to pull this into place. Let's see. And let's get a close-up. And what I needed to do is get this point approximately there and that point approximately here and it's really hard to see right now but I'm working on it a little it looks like about there and there again let's go out again and pull that up a little bit and pull that up a little bit maybe we can even go up like that and up like that. So we're trying to follow the street line is basically what we're trying to do. And now let's go, let's see what it looks like when we go back to the full opacity. And let's get a close up. And my processor, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's going a little crazy. My fan is going nuts. So, okay. This is, this is going to do for now, but I'm just going to now crop it with the size of this photo. So let's go to, we got 100% opacity. I'm going to move this photo up front just for now so I can see where I want to get rid of this one. And then I'm going to take this layer with the perspective. I'm going to rasterize it so it'll... So my processes will stop going nuts, maybe. <laughs> and then what I'll do right now is I'm going to select the size of the photo. And then I'm going to say select invert selection. 
and what it's doing is selecting outside and then I'm going to get rid of all this outside here so I'll do control or command X and deselect and now I can bring that back up to the front and let's see where we're at uh, let's go so there's our cobblestone street <laughs> and basically what you need to do next we'll lower the opacity um, or we can just hide this and select him at least his legs and all and we can pick pick and choose different things so let's do what selection should we can use the selection brush tool real small I'm using my left bracket to make it small right and so what I'll do now is I will take this layer turn it on again so I inverted the selection now and I went to that pixel layer and I added a mask and of course it's not really great <laughs> because I did it real quick but I can continue with that mask in black select the paintbrush and in black I can add his shoes back in like that and let's see what that looks like and this is not like I said I did this very quickly and I just saw Carl's tutorial and I really did like it uh, you can do other things with it you can play around with all the edges uh, mask this all out but I just wanted to show you a way of using Carl's technique and I'll just crop this for now just so you can see where we're at and that and that and we say apply and I will go to layer merge visible and hide everything else and that's how I ended up with a flagstone street now you should really work again like I tell you all the time work harder on this uh, I just wanted to show you a technique that Carl used and I took his technique and I, he put it on top of just on top of a photo but I wanted to do a little bit more a little texture I could have done a little 3d on each of these um, flagstones I could have done so many more things than this but I wanted to keep it quick so I hope you like this tutorial and if you did please click like and subscribe and have a great day thank you bye